Hello, my name is Hans Lysklimt Johansson. I'm out of Oslo, Norway, and I'm the party leader of Alliansen, political party, ethno-nationalist political party that I started in Norway right after Donald Trump won his election back in 2016. I was the most uh, prolific Donald Trump supporter in Norway. Of course, they used me uh, to make a fool out of me. But when Donald Trump won, surprisingly, in 2016, I became almost like an overnight celebrity in Norway as the most visible uh, Donald Trump supporter. And we started the party Alliansen. So this video is a video to the Max Spencer group. Um, and, uh, and uh, the um, National Policy Institute. Uh, and I follow the uh, podcasts, and I must say that uh, Richard Spencer and the group around uh, you, Richard, have um, gotten new energy. It really, I can really feel the new energy, and I, I appreciate that very much. There's something there that, you know, I came out of the 2015, 2016 energy, 17 energy with the memes and all that and started Allianzen in that energy field and have sort of been floating on that energy field that has changed as, as you talk about a lot. And I, I like your strategizing. I like uh, the, the, the stratum that you are... Uh, working on through the podcasts that you do every every Sunday and and also the other ones that that there's a there's a stratum that uh, st stratagem and a strategy that is developing over time as the discussion goes on and I'm I'm participating in that and there's there's definitely a lot of those elements there that I want to talk about and some that I agree with some that I I think needs modification some that we can adopt in Alliansen some that we can create into an international thing um, but it needs more work a lot of it um, first of all I want to say uh, to Richard Spencer that. Um, Richard has sort of denounced Donald Trump now and is, is no longer a supporter of Donald Trump. And of course, the whole support for Donald Trump back in 2016 was, it, it was a meme in itself. Donald Trump was a meme and he still is a meme and all that. And we aligned with that. I must, I, I do understand somehow where Richard is coming from, from an American perspective, where he is at. But I want to add to that, that from my perspective and our perspective here in Alliansen in Norway, we still sort of are able to use the Donald Trump energy and supporting Donald Trump to create and to ride an energy field that is still very much present. You know, you in the States, you're, you're too close for comfort. The, the whole Trump thing and, and all the bad things that comes out of that. They're so close that you can feel the pain. But for us here in Norway, Norway is still a very well-functioning society. And the whole Trump thing is a sort of a, a thing in the distance. And um, that makes the whole dynamic of Trump very different from what you have in the States. Here in Norway, there's no doubt that the Trump derangement syndrome that we see the left is going through, that's a huge advantage for us. Absolutely. And the fact that they fear Trump is fantastic because we're the opposition and we use that energy. And um, there's also no doubt that Trump is a chaos candidate. He was that in 2016 and he still is that now. It's a chaos field that nobody really owns, nobody controls. But you can enter that field and use that energy towards uh, your interests. And since, of course, for me personally and for Alliansen, I was the most visible supporter last time. I will not be the most visible Donald Trump supporter this time around because I have now been branded as a bad boy and where they call us fascists and all the regular stuff. So, you know, we, we're deplatformed and all that. But there's still we're still riding on that energy from three or four years ago. And, and it's definitely very much still present. We can ride that energy. So, um, and, and just the fact that Donald Trump is 
the president of the United States, and we started the party out of that event of him being elected. It gives us a kind of cover. If it wasn't for that, we would be, you know, uh, fascists and Nazis and, and, and whatever. They would call us all those usual names. But with Donald Trump being the president, it gives us a kind of tremendous kind of cover. You know, it's like a, it's like a shield. There's a limit to how much they can demonize us when Donald Trump is the president of the United States and the free world and, and that whole thing. We'll see how that dynamic changes if Donald Trump should not be reelected. We'll see about that. I think he will be reelected, but we'll see. That dynamic will, he will be vilified and demonized and, and so will we in that case. So we'll have to deal with that when that comes in that case. But it's, a, it's definitely, without doubt, it's a, it's a cover for us now cannot be overstated because they're coming after us legally the media is coming after us deplatforming all that but there's a limit to how much the, the cover of Donald Trump sets a limit to how much they can sort of attack us with those usual means because we have that cover of the president so being the, the supporters of the president and and i mean the support we had for Donald Trump in 2015, 16, 17, it was naive. You know, everyone who supported Donald Trump was naive. And, and it's still naive because he's a, he thinks about himself uh, first and foremost. And he's like the chaos candidate. He's an outsider. You know, so it's a, nobody owns him. Nobody has him in their pocket. He is his own thing. And of course, you would be uh, disillusioned, and of course, he would disappoint. I mean, that's the name of the game. Anything else is just being naive, uh, and and being disappointed is really only a reflection of the naivety that was shown before. So, you know, that's it. That's the Trump thing. Um, I want to I want to talk about the future as well building a political movement out of this. I mean, Richard Spencer is talking about that, starting a party, um, building a political movement um, with institutions in the States. Well, I have done that in Norway. And of course, I can tell you it's not easy and all that. But it, it has had some uh, impact, definitely. And it definitely has meant a lot for me personally and my social network and my friends and the sort of extended network that is the people that are active in Allianz. And you can say what you want about political results and impact and all that, but um, uh, it's definitely created a network of people that are growing and, and building off each other and, and giving each other energy. So it's been energizing for us. And we'll see how the results goes in the national election in 2017. We got 0 0.1, one-tenth of a percent in the whole uh, country. So that's a long way off the 4% that you need to go into parliament. Uh, there is, there is uh, you, you can get into parliament in a district with a smaller result than that, but 4% is the cutoff. Um, but in the local elections uh, last year, uh, in some districts, we got uh, 10 times that result, 1% uh, in some districts. So we're definitely closing in. And I think you have to go through a few cycles before you reach the critical mass that where, where, where you get in. And there's definitely a, a, some kind of track, a pathway for Allianzen to reach the point where we enter into, into uh, parliament. Um, there's a lot of opposition, and they don't want that, and they'll try to stop us and all that, but it, it's absolutely possible. So I am looking at what we are doing in Norway in a, in a more international context, comparing to other parties and comparing to what's happening in other countries, because I, I think what we need to build is something that is, if you look at how the political parties that have become movements have sprung up. I mean, we had the socialist parties, they they copied each other in Europe and, and became very similar in the UK, 
and Sweden and Norway and and it was built over the same kind of mold to a certain extent also the conservative parties although they sort of sprung they were always there in the sense uh, they sprung out of history while the socialist movements actually were something new that that were um, revolutionary or, or, or power seeking power uh, something they managed to do and in more recent times we have seen the green parties they have you know if, if, if a party structure an idea a concept works in one country it's likely that it works in other countries as well the united states is somewhat exceptional but a lot of the European countries uh, and Oceania, Australia, New Zealand are very similar. So if you have something working in one country, it usually works in the other countries as well. And we saw that with the environment, the green parties, but we've also seen it with the pirate party that came out of Sweden. It was copied. That has collapsed now and it's, 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 it's not uh, the same anymore. Um, but we've seen it with the um, feminist initiative, uh, of course, we also saw it to some degree in the 30s with the fascist movements. They, they also were sort of looking at each other and, and mirroring each other in a certain sense. So I think whatever we need to build needs to have the ambition, I think, to find a structure that can be copied, to find the success formula, to find uh, the best practices that, that, that works, that can be copied. So I think we need to think about that. And what is that? If you look at the broad picture now, Alliansen is, by certain historical coincidences, we actually took over a shell of a, a party that someone else tried to start before us. And we have the triangle and the logo that I, it's not a pyramid, it's a mountain, very important. It's not... It's not uh, a controlled opposition. I can say that myself because I control this party and I am not controlled opposition. Um, but it has a certain specific history. If you look at other countries, we talk a lot to Alternative for Sweden in Sweden. They, in turn, talk a lot to Alternative for Germany that we also have some contact with. But So the Alternative for is something that might be a, a brand and a concept and something that can be built into a more a bigger movement maybe so i'm placing some bets on that we are for the next election we'll do alliansen alternative for norway as our slogan so the sort of the alternative for is a concept that might be something it can be replicated and, and strength can be built and sent across from country to country. Maybe that can be used in the States as well. Alternative for America, alternative for the United States. Maybe, maybe that is something that can work. Um, I'm talking to, uh, you know, people like Mark Collette, who's doing very interesting things in the UK. The UK, of course, is a bigger country. It has more... It has many historical threads that he can pick up on and, and a very interesting, fascinating thing. But I, I think that all this needs to be synchronized somehow so that we're talking 2024, 2025, maybe the next election in the United States in, in 2024, that um, we, the opposition, on the identitarian side on on the nationalist front i'm an old libertarian myself that went into the nationalist uh, fray once i saw where the liberal progressive libertarian sort of uh, ideas were taking us um but to 2024 if we can have a more synchronized maybe a branding that is coloring that is more synchronized instead of diverse uh, as it is now maybe that can be something the problem with the alternative for uh, movement both in sweden and germany is that they have a, a just inherent uh, fear of talking about uh, zionism uh, jewish power jewish control that is something that you know 
it is so tainted in the in Germany uh, that they fully avoid it, and the Swedes they fully avoid it. But we in Norway we talk about it, so maybe we can influence them to actually talk about it because that's the only way forward. And all these people they know very well uh, the whole JQ issue. They know everything, uh, but they just don't want to talk about it. They're they're scared uh, to to. Uh, to, to, to almost crapping themselves uh, once it's mentioned. And, and that is a psychological process that they need to go through because we cannot win this. They will talk about Islam and Muslims and all that. We do that too. But they will not talk about the Israel issue. And that's something that has to be broken into them. We have to push them. We have to introduce that topic because we cannot... This synchronization of the nationalist parties and the the, um, the process that I'm talking about here as a response, a video response to what you've been talking about at, at Radix is um, uh, absolutely needed to be able to talk about everything including Islam and, and Judaism and, and, and the problems that go along with that. So, so these are some um, ideas around that. Finally, my, my last point um, is that somehow I think we need a spiritual aspect to this. The spiritual side needs to be there. And I want to introduce some, some things there. Um, I mean, we had Christianity in Norway for a thousand years, but before that we had the Norse pagan religion, and I think that can play a very important role. That is taking the Varg pill. I've taken the Varg pill. But the Varg pill needs to be institutionalized, and it needs to be polished, and it ne it's a little bit of an uncut uh, gem. Um, and uh, someone needs to go in front and sort of uh, take on the role of talking about uh, the Norse aspects. And we, we see that already happening in Norway and other countries where certain individuals are talking about this more seriously now and in a modern context. And I'm a member of the AFA, which is a religious uh, revival institutionalized of the ancient pagan religious system. Um, so so th there's something there that can be tied into the spirituality. And, and for me personally, I also see huge value in the Hare Krishna movement uh, with uh, the Bhagavad Gita, the Indian, the Hindu movement out of India, because they have preserved the structure of paganism that we have to some large degree lost with Christianity. But with the Hare Krishna, it's, it's possible to revitalize this. And I'm very positive, very hopeful that this can be done uh, and, and structured up. This is something that we can present as a serious alternative to the liberal progressive train wreck that, that we're on. Uh, but it needs a lot more work it needs to be uh, have visionaries that can talk about it and can merge it into a political movement. You know, um, Prabhupada that came with the Hare Krishna movement to the West, he said all the time that a very important part of the Hare Krishna movement is a political branch. We need that political branch. Uh, but I, I think that what we have, the leftovers of the pagan religion. It's not even leftovers because there's so much structure. The, the Christianity that we had for a thousand years is really a, almost only a superstructure on top of, of a pagan sort of strong framework that we can revitalize and get the energy from the Hare Krishna movement and the books and the knowledge and everything and fuse that into something new that is our own, that is ourselves, find ourselves in a new revitalized way. So this is this is a path. Um, then also I think that there's you know the whole ayahuasca movement, there's something important there. There's a spiritual path that I think someone like us can claim. So it's a little bit of a sidetrack, but I'm I'm working with some people that are, are integrating uh, ayahuasca with the Hare Krishna movement and also partly some of the Norse stuff. This is A lot of this stuff is happening under the radar. It's, it's occult and it's, uh, it's something that, you know, it's, 
it's happening under the radar for a reason, but at some point it's uh, ready for prime time. It's ready to be picked up. It's ready to be launched. It's ready to be capitalized. It's ready to, to, to claim its inherent power, and someone needs to do that. And, and in these things, um, coupled with the internet and Bitcoin and the sort of sovereignty, the, the, the structure that we see on the internet for uh, claiming sovereignty, you know, with Bitcoin, you have those Bitcoins and no one, no one can sort of confiscate them. And, and also some of the structure of the internet, the ownership to domain names and, and the protocols and all that, it has a kind of resilience to the liberal progressive train wreck uh, takeover that is coming now. So I see a combination of these things that can be manifested into a political movement that is something close to what you guys are talking about. And that is the way forward. So that was my video reply to the Radix, to the Max Spencer group. I'd love to continue the conversation.